cheers to uh, 10 years of being human. So, you know, when you guys first started um, pursuing the project, what was your awareness of Being Human UK? I, I didn't know of the show. Um, and I actually didn't really, I didn't really watch it during the process of getting on the show. In fact, once we were all there, if I remember correctly, they told us not to watch it because they, they, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't want us to be influenced by what they were doing. But I know at some point we all did watch it um, and loved it. Really, yeah. it's a really great show and felt really, really different than what we were doing. And we were able to appreciate it for what it was. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. I mean, I was, I was certainly aware of the show, but I, I absolutely, I don't even think I started watching any of the episodes until like the fourth season, if not after we finished, but they did. Yeah. They certainly made a point of like wanting us to do our own thing, have our own thing. Um, and so I, so yeah, I, I hadn't watched it. I seem to remember that from the Comic-Con panels that I, I think you guys started watching it like a season behind, like after you would complete your first season, then you maybe you would watch a season of the UK version, but as you were doing this, what was your thought about, when did you feel like you had confidently escaped those comparisons or shadow of the UK version? And before you answer that, <laughs> we, we might have someone uh, with us. He was Josh Levison on Being Human. His name's Sammy Huntington. He's a nice guy. Let's bring him in. I see you're on your cell phone. I am. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I hopefully this works. I mean, can you hear me? Can you see me all right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> Just a, a slight lag, but you know what? We're going to work with this. Uh, I'll throw the question at you to start, Sammy. Like, what was the moment uh, where you felt like really being human U.S. escaped sort of that comparison to the the U.K. version? I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> this is my. <laughs> uh... I can hear you. <laughs> Hold on, let me try again. I think. It Hold on, hold on. Almost, <laughs> almost professional, people. <laughs> John is my favorite. <laughs> John uh, is. <laughs> oh, well. Wow. Oh, oh, my gosh. What a nightmare. So well, much better. To answer your question, I think that we started leaning into being our own show at the end of season one, didn't we? Like it started, it started trending that way because then in season two was when we really kind of departed. From what I remember, I think it was season two felt like completely new territory. Season two felt like we were like really our own show, which was awesome, which was a really cool feeling. Although, you know, we had such a great foundation uh, with which to build off of, uh, from the uh, from the the UK series that that I was happy to you know to to do that as well it was it was just wonderful mm -hmm. um, but I think that also like I have to give the writers credit like I think that right from the get go the show had its own independent voice and um, and obviously like all of us were big fans of the UK series as well uh, so we got to kind of pay homage to them while still kind of like bringing a new um vibe to it does that make any sense it made a lot of sense and and I, i'm kind of curious about of course you know Kristen. like i guess you became you were already on the the show and then you became a regular cast member by season two and yeah. right so what was when you guys were first coming together first meeting was there a moment you recall where each of you thought to quote stepbrothers like did we just become best friends are we best friends now uh, where you clicked as a cast with one another. And uh, Chrissy, why don't you begin with that? And then I'll hear I, from everybody else. Question. It was one of those one of those situations where from the moment I stepped on set, I just felt like I was at home. Like I remember specifically Sammy like greeted me with the biggest hug I've ever gotten from a stranger. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was just, lovely like there was never I never felt this weird sort of I don't know I, I didn't feel like the outsider coming in I was welcomed right away and I felt like I knew everyone already like it was so serendipitous the whole thing um and I think yeah I think that I came in in episode four or something 
two, four maybe of season one and then recurred for the first season. And then, and then, uh, and then was a regular at second season, but, but fun, fun fact, I was initially, I had auditioned initially for, um, the vampire girl in season one, <laughs> don't Sarah's role. I don't remember the name of the character. Does anyone uh, else remember the name of the character? Elizabeth? No, I don't know. I'm, I'm talking about. We don't remember. We don't remember. Yeah. Like, we don't know. Know. I had initially gone out and, and, and they wanted to cast Rebecca. a role, but another Rebecca. job conflicted. Rebecca. And I almost, played Rebecca. I almost played Rebecca. And then because of another job, I couldn't do that role. And so that's how I ended up playing Nora. That worked out well. Yeah. And, and Megan, you know, what about your your thought when you when you first came in, and you met these guys? Was it uh, was it a friendship at first sight or or yeah, it was it was we met uh, at the screen test. They sort of were doing a mix and match of a bunch of their top choices for these roles. And um, I went in. I remember reading with I was paired with Sammy and Sam and it just felt really right. It just just like getting into a warm pool, you know what I mean? It was just like, it was just kind of obvious. For me, I remember, um, you know, the first time the three of us read together, uh, this is a two-part, this is a two-parter. First time <laughs> the three of us read at the screen test, it was just so much fun. I know that sounds so dumb, but it was like, Oh, this is, we were like instantly having a really good time and felt like we could really, like the characters found themselves when the other two people, like it's like suddenly there was just this like, oh, these are who these characters are and they belong together, which like really like, you know, I think was what made the show kind of amazing. And then, and then Kristen, when Kristen came along, I think the reason there was so much warmth there was because all of us were like, this girl needs to be on the show. Like she should, especially for me, I was like, this is such a, like the exact path that I want Josh to take. And, and like, and it, it just, it morphed into, it was interesting. It's like a real like relationship or a marriage where like you, you meet that person and then you're like, Oh, now like, it's not just me. It's like the two of us. And it was suddenly the two of us going on this journey together. And it just like literally elevated everything. So it, it, uh, it, it's funny because I always forget that you came in later because know, me too. it always seems so yeah, like episode four, I really want to go back and rewatch everything. So I, wa I showed Audrey, my daughter, uh, the last, the very last scene. Oh, you did. I showed her because she was like, I told her I was doing this today, and she was like, Oh, can I see the scene where I was a baby? <laughs> and because uh, I'm sure everybody fucking knows because I say it all the time, but like my kids were the kids at the end where Kristen and yeah. I, Nora and Josh's little kids. Babies. And when they were little tiny babies, little and little it blew yeah. that? I think they did. I think so. Did you yeah. just take yeah. <laughs> they are they're inquiring about uh where their paychecks are from that exactly. that that it's job. It's the, already spent Sagers. Was, <laughs> they, was there was their salary just like put into your paycheck? I thought you were gonna say was their salary just pudding? <laughs> <laughs> was just pudding. Which wouldn't yeah, be bad yeah, actually. Yeah. Did you kind of feel that love right away from the fan base that they just they latched onto it right away? Yeah, you know, it was kind of unfamiliar for, for me anyway to be on a. I think Whitworth had done some like uh, like um, genre sci-fi fan kind of stuff before. I think he was on Smallville before uh, the show, so he had. But I for me, it was like the first time the, I got to experience like ravenous fans and fans that really wanted to know what was going to happen next and we're so invested in the characters and would be vocal about it and with things that they both loved and things that they wanted to be different and things that they were hoping for and and um and we actually formed like kind of amazing relationships with some of these people andrew being one of them but like um but yeah it, it uh it to this day people talk about the show and and um and 
I think it, I think it was like kind of a special thing for a lot of people. And which is really cool because I, I mean, I can say for myself, it was like an extremely transformative moment in time, uh, both personally and, and professionally. And like, so like the fact that it had an impact on people both while we were making it and now even years later, um, it, it feels like, okay, like, I wasn't crazy. We were like, we were making something kind of special. Like it was really, really special. And like, we had such an amazing relationship that um, not just the cast too, like the whole, everyone involved was like so committed to the material, all the writers, all the people behind the, all the crew, everybody behind the scenes um, was so invested. And so the fact that fans were into it, it was just like mm -hmm. icing on the cake. It was just the, that was the best. It's the reason you do it. Right. Like, um, so, uh, and I, I, you know, like who knows if that kind of fan interaction is anything that I'll ever experience again, but I'm really happy to have had it. You know what I mean? Do you, um, Megan and Chrissy, do you want to add to that? Well, I still find it amazing that still to this day, when someone comes up to me and talks about how much they love the show, I immediately, there's something, there, nothing I have ever worked on is quite like this, but when someone says that they love being human, I, I feel an immediate connection to them. Uh, and I think it's because I loved the show so much and it was such a huge part of my life. And I feel like I became an adult when we were shooting it. And so I watched the show and loved the show as much as they did. So I, I it's always special for me to hear someone talk about the impact it's had on their life as well. Yeah. I feel the same. Yeah. It's, 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 it will forever hold such a special place in my heart. And it's, I, Megan, I completely agree that it's an instant connection and it's always my favorite thing to hear that people uh, loved. From my perspective, like the fan reaction, the fan turnout at Comic-Con was always impressive. And also having done a lot of panels out there, I can honestly say that you were and remain my favorite cast panel to ever do because of the just the energy and the chemistry and just how much fun it was that you guys brought to to the stage. Do you think with that said, over time, how much of yourselves do you think started bleeding into your characters? Obviously, very different types of characters and not always happy ones. Most of the time, not happy ones. But did you find yourself bleeding into your characters or having your characters influence yourselves at all? It's hard to say because so much of Sally is who I am, uh, especially at that time in my life. Uh, it was like my eyes were open for the first time uh, in the same way that hers were, in, in a sense. And so it's hard to really draw a line between who she is and who I am. It always sort of felt the same. I feel like I started out as kind of more of a hard ass than I am in real life. I think I project that out much more than I actually am. They certainly started writing more to my voice, I feel like, as the show went on. But there were certain, we certainly had similarities, she and I, but also distinct differences, I'd say. <laughs> um, but, but, but yeah, as far as like the longer the show went, I certainly feel like it was, yeah, all the writers were really writing to us in so many ways. Like mm -hmm. the way that we spoke was so similar to how we spoke and speak. So, yeah. Well, Sammy, you can't have been as neurotic uh, and oh. as, as- Have you met me? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's exactly the response I wanted. Yeah, speak yeah, to yeah. that a little bit. Um, I think that a lot of it had to do with the fact that um, we were all so close. Um, and I think that anytime we all got in a room together and we were reading lines, automatically, I think that a lot of um, kind of who we inherently are kind of like just bled into the scenes. And so I think that that's probably um, one of the reasons why uh, it, it worked so well. Uh, is because we were borrowing from our actual relationship uh, and and just like, it was just automatic. Like it was just, it, it went on to the screen, you know? Um, and 
And also what, you know, I mean, I think Kristen's right. Like as soon as, as soon as they kind of discovered what we excelled at, they started to kind of write for that. Um, and, uh, and that's always a huge benefit of me. I think of making a TV series is that, you know, you live in these characters for long enough that the writers, you know, really get to know who you are and, and what you, uh, what you do best. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think the other thing is like, it was to Kristen's point, like I think that the differences between our real selves and the characters really happened when the characters were making decisions that we in our lives wouldn't do, which wouldn't right. actually make, you know what I mean? Making the choices that were like, oh fuck, like don't, uh. but that's what made it interesting. And that's what makes it interesting to be like an actor is like, you don't want you want the character to be something that's not a hundred percent you, you know. Like so, anytime any of the characters would make decisions that were like cringy or weird, um, it was always a really good thing, you know. It was always like that kind of like, oh, this is like so <laughs> it's not going to end well. I think it's definitely you know we have to call out uh, yes the the writers on the show and also. Uh, producers Jeremy Carver, Anna Frick, uh, and then uh, Toby Whithouse, who created the original UK version. But yeah. was there were there moments where the writers uh, presented you with something that you found ever found was going perhaps too far, too weird? Maybe you're going to lose the character, lose the audiences, but then ended up being a really strong creative choice. All all the time, I think. I think all the, I mean, I, I don't, I actually don't want to keep speaking. I want to let you guys speak. <laughs> that, that happened to me all the time. I, you know. I personally was questioning Nora's decision to suddenly decide that she didn't want to be a human being at all anymore and just wanted to. <laughs> 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 um, that for me, I remember being like, okay. Um, not sure how I feel about this journey for her, but but ultimately, yeah, it made it it, it made so much conflict in the season that it that it was great. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't. I mean, I don't know. Was yeah. it that she wanted to be a werewolf all the time? Yeah, or is don't you remember that scene yeah. in the woods when we were naked, like we always were, waking up naked. Um, and I. Yes. Yeah, Scene where I was like had gone away for a couple episodes. I was like running, <laughs> yeah, with, uh, running with yeah, yeah, with, twins. Yeah, the twins. Uh, that's right. And I tell you that I don't want to be a human being anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. you. Uh, yeah, uh, Sammy, Chris, you guys spent a lot of time in in the buff. The lines, even. I remember the lines from that scene. I <laughs> said. You want to be human, but I don't think I do. You're right. <laughs> Which is always a great moment when they say the title of the show in the in the show or in the movie. So you got to do that. Um, uh, Megan, you uh, whereas they spent a lot of time naked, you spent a lot of time in the same outfit, uh, but not a not a, a not an uncomfortable outfit. Looking back, how was the costume choices? of Sally, was it, what, were you pretty, pretty pleased with how that one worked out for you or were you as bored as hell? A little bit of both. I think there's a real comfort in coming in and wearing the same thing every day. I mean, it was pajamas essentially until it was a dress. Um, but you know, like it was exciting to change the outfit. Uh, I, I will say that I, I really, really regret not taking the sweater. I don't know why I didn't oh, take it. Sweater? I, I don't. I honestly don't know. I don't remember. I don't know that it was even offered to me. I, I can't. Maybe Janet still has it. Guaranteed. I'm sure that I'm sure they still have it somewhere. But I, I really do regret not not taking it because it's so iconic. Fans always ask uh, anytime there's Comic Con appearances about taking things from the set, and I think it's a it's a good question because it shows that they're thinking of the show, they're connecting with the show, and that wondering how well. you connected with the show. So. Yeah. That said, what were the things? Did you snag anything from the set? Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> who, uh, yeah. And, uh, well, first of all, I don't think did we have the choice? I think who decided? Everyone decided together what each person would get. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And I think it was Anna who decided, but I was lucky enough to get Dog, the Catman dude. It was the right choice. 
It was definitely the right choice. He needs to be with his mother. Um, <laughs> but he, yeah, he stands proudly in my house. Uh, it's your aesthetic too. Like it definitely like works in your house. Yeah, like, he's like, I'm oh. home, <laughs> obviously. Does anybody else have visitation rights to him? I mean, I know at the end of the show, it was agreed that he was, that he would have uh, visitation rights, but because um, wait, uh, Nora and Josh ended up with him, right? Did we? I think so, oh, yeah. We well, did. I mean, they ended up dead. Spoiler, but um, yeah, you know. But, <laughs> um, well, as soon as Maggie lifts the restraining order against Kristen, <laughs> he'll be able to go outside. <laughs> meet her kid. He'll yeah, nice. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm glad he ended up in a good place. Did I? Uh, did I? Either of you two take anything from set, or were you allowed to take anything? I ended up with. A like a brown leather chair, but then <laughs> you seem like confused. You're like, oh, yeah, because I don't have it anymore. When I left Montreal, it it ended up staying in the apartment that I was in, and I don't know what became of it. I don't even think it was. I think it was wow. Faux. It wasn't a. It wasn't even real leather. It was fine. It was fine. <laughs> I like. I like that we gather to talk about. No one ever even sat in it. It was like take this chair. Like. We <laughs> This is such a downer note of like, we're talking about the legacy, the anniversary. You're like, yeah, I got the chair. I don't know. Like someone else ended up with it. I don't even remember. It wasn't a special chair. The person who has it. Chair? What? The person who has it is just like, oh my God, are you kidding? I'm just sitting in it right now. Holy shit. Looking up the number to Planet Hollywood. Uh <laughs> Whitworth got a chair. Whitworth got that great green chair, right? Yeah, that, that, that one was. That, that, was, one cool. was a, that one was. It was cool. It was like a throne. Like, yeah. What did you get, Sammy? I got the. Uh, I got a couple cool things. I got the bugs that went above the fireplace. Oh yeah. Guys. That was really cool. Zoe made that. Was Zoe, our our uh, our uh, set designer, was like a genius. Like that house was like there was so much cool stuff oh, in that one. Yeah. Well, the interesting things to learn. It's like always like new weird stuff that there was like tucked into a corner. Well, so I got a really cool thing that went two actually two things that went over the mantle. I got the bugs, and then I got the remember when there was the H, the metal, the metal H that was that burned up in the fire. And I got that. Okay. Did you get, which is cool. did you get your werewolf scrapbook? No, maybe. Well, hold hold that thought because someone might want to weigh in, and let's bring him in. We've got uh, Sam Whitwer has arrived, what? fashionably late, uh, who played Aiden on Being Human. Sam, oh. I got the werewolf uh, you you scrapbook. That was me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had a voice session that ran late, but the good news was it happened right here <laughs> at home. So I was like, okay, great. So I run into here and plug in. What's You're that? drunk. <laughs> Yeah, I'm guys. I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Well, uh, welcome, welcome to the party. Uh, and so, so we we just uh, established that uh, Kristen had a, a chair from set that she just kind of discarded unceremoniously, and you also uh, got a chair. Is that still with you? He's moving a chair. Isn't it? Okay. I love that our producer is asking right now in the private chat, what if Sam doesn't come back? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Me? That, yes. Yeah, that chair is rad. Oh, you're yeah. going to sit in it now. <laughs> That's the thing to do. Sorry, guys. It's, it's only appropriate that I do this. Oh, it's so <laughs> comfortable. Oh, guys. I love that chair. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, it does look cozy, actually. Real That's magical. It. Found it. Wow. <laughs> Were you just stroking your own hair? No, my chair. I'll stroke my no. hair. Uh, look at this. Is the hair? Uh, the hair is. Uh, yeah, it's kind of. It I'm does. Both. <laughs> Don't you wish you could do this right now, Kristen Hager, with the chair that you just discarded, just <laughs> left to the trash? know what chair i'm talking about no you don't no one ever sat in it no idea I, i'm willing to bet a fan does and that's oh, what yeah. matters that's what matters uh well let me okay so uh sam since you're you're joining us let me just ask like with this show was there anything that you wanted to ever pursue with aiden that you were not quite able 
to make happen any kind of like direction with that character that you you never got to fulfill boy the uh, you know i feel like we got to do so much we got to do all the best stuff yeah i don't know i i <laughs> i feel like i it was an embarrassment of bridges when it came to the material when it was announced that the season would or that the show would end series would end with uh season four there was this very nice, strong announcement. It didn't just go away. It was a wrap up. Looking back, were you pleased with sort of the the exit that the show had? And Sam, I'll start with you and then we'll move down the line. I just wish that sci-fi would have told the fans so that they weren't surprised, you know? Did they not? No, no they, not. They, the fans found out like an episode or two beforehand like I even remember I was on the set for season four leading into the premiere of season four and they didn't tell the media and it was very kind of like sprung on people, but you guys did put together a little package that you put out there, but um, saying thanks for the support. So, okay. So you wish that they had told the fans, but overall, how did you guys feel about the conclusion of the series? Uh, Kristen, why don't you respond? Yeah. I mean, I feel like they, the, the, the way that, they wrapped up the Nora Josh storyline was beautiful. I, I thought it was great. I mean, I would tune in for uh, some kind of spinoff of that to see what happened to them. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, but but yeah, no, I thought I was really happy with how they how they wrapped it up. And then as a whole as well, like saying goodbye to this house and obviously the, the Sally Aiden stuff I thought was beautiful. I, I loved the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I bet. How about you, Megan? Yeah, I loved it too. Um, it was just nice that everyone got to be happy for the first time in four yeah. years. <laughs> the whole but, show. Yeah, it was just nice that they all these people who went through so much just finally got a, a, what seems to be a happy ending. Mm -hmm. And and it it felt like real closure to us too because we shot it in that order. Obviously, we burnt the entire house down, and it was like yeah. it was really emotional. Yeah, us yeah. like. Saying and we shot that on the last day, I think the last day of shooting. Yeah, and it was really, really emotional to be like, I spent more time in this place than I have in my home in the last four years, and we burnt it to a crisp. And it was really saying goodbye. It was you know the end of an era. Yeah, so, Sammy, I I thought the I I thought that uh the, you know because we knew like going into season four that it was our last one. And um, and the writers knew, and I thought that they could not have done a better job of kind of, um, uh, you know, creating an arc that really led to a satisfying ending without just a bunch of filler. Like there was like, it was a great, just as a season of television, it was fantastic. I think season four was like, maybe my favorite. Like I thought everything that was happening for all the characters was interesting. When Aiden and Sally, when they were like, yeah, Aiden and Sally are going to hook up. We were all, all of us were like, wait, like what? Yeah. Like we never pictured that. And then I now, and even at the time when it was kind of um, uh, being, you know, formed, it was like, oh, I can't imagine it being anything else being going any other way and then they wrapped it up just so so beautifully i mean honestly it was just so um hopefully it's exactly what everybody wanted i mean it's sad that it ended and god would yeah. i love to do another couple seasons of course um you know i was working with my best friends and i was you know creatively happy and challenged and and um but um couldn't it couldn't have been any better in my opinion um, once again, the writers really loved the show and, and it, and it showed, you know, it really, they took a lot of pride in it and, um, you know, it was a w wonderful ending. Yeah. The whole season was a wonderful ending. You know, the whole season was great. We were very lucky that the writers all, it's not just that we all had the same sense of humor as the writers, but also we had sort of the same, uh, emotional storytelling sensibilities. I mean, you right. know, like there are a lot of jobs where you go and you shoot stuff and you, you work hard, but then you kind of forget about it when you go home. And 
we were always anxious to see, oh, have you seen the new episode or have you seen yeah. the new cut of this? Or did you, you know, we, we were extremely invested in what we were doing. We really loved it. We thought it was cool and we thought it was funny and we thought it was heartfelt and, and we just, we just really, really enjoyed it. Well, something that really came across is that this was a family. You guys did come together as a family and uh, quite literally, in fact, because uh, Megan, you ended up having your own brother uh, play your brother on the show. And, you know, I have a question about that, but you know what? Instead of me asking you, why don't I just ask him? Let's uh, go ahead and bring him in. <laughs> yes! Hi, hi. Uh, we're, we're, we're rules not about. <laughs> uh, yeah. Everybody, we've got Jesse Rath here. Who is the Jesse Rath. I thought this was the defiance panel. <laughs> <laughs> defiance. Uh, it's it's actually like the Brainiac yeah. panel because uh, at least three of you now have played Brainiac, Brainiac on three Supergirl, oh right? God. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that's yeah, that's true. Doing very uh, true. Good. Uh, um, Brainiac thing. Is this is this right, Jesse? Do I do I still have it? Is the Brainiac thing it's better than I do? <laughs> well, yeah, because his finger is like bend. <laughs> <laughs> look at that! Look at those things. And then, and then, Jenny, and then you know what you do? You look in here. You look. That's you it. look in there. <laughs> you do that. You, go, you gotta go like this. You gotta look in there. The there it is. And then, <laughs> which, by the way, me and Sammy did this more than once on set. We're like, check it out. Yeah, because we're children. <laughs> what? More we do it all than, the time. Yeah, daily. Well, uh, <laughs> Jesse, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. And you know, I, I'm so curious because you did play. You played Robbie. You played Sally's brother on this show what was it like for you entering this show these guys that were already established uh as a cast did you immediately felt welcomed in and did you feel like you were part of this family because then robbie continues to recur for the the rest of the show it was so funny because i you know i would hang out with 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 these guys and uh and and then i just all of a sudden it's like i took over their show i they they all i was shooting and they all rapped and then it was a, a like a there was one day of filming where it was just me and their crew. It was it was very yeah. surreal. Wait, um, Jesse, can I ask you a question? Yes. <laughs> Jesse, do you remember? This is the way that okay on a normal set they'd be like okay so Jesse's character is going to get electrocuted by this power tool that gets in the water and and he gets electrocuted and we'll do that and we'll have a little pyrotechnic gag and okay cool not the way we did it in Being Human in Montreal. No, it was like, I. How are we doing the pyrotechnic, Jesse? Oh, we'll just, we're going to put the power tool in the water and we hope sparks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, my character dies because he's in a puddle of water and then the power tool falls in the puddle of water and electrocutes me. And so, when we were shooting How that, we achieve that that's, effect? What, that's what we did. <laughs> and I remember. Wait, asking, I know how we do it. I was like, Let's do that. I was like, wait, isn't this dangerous? And they're like, no, it's fine. And then I was like, but this kills my character. Well, how am I not supposed to do it? <laughs> also, we have to shoot it, Jesse. Remember Jesse, the special effects guy? You we tell us. Something. Come on, we're burning light, Jesse. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would expect uh, maybe safer working conditions in Canada, uh, but I guess that that that's not the case. Uh, no, <laughs> it's part of the fun of it. <laughs> someone else's it expense, really like, or you know when putting someone else in danger it's like yeah, yeah it was, wait, it, and and of course you did spend time as a ghost as well um and did your sister offer any advice on ghosty activities or behaviors or acting i don't know did you i can't I, remember i can't remember i don't know i i you were yeah you were it was you you as a ghost well you're always a ghost in the show <laughs> And uh, you've, okay, you've, uh, you've you, seen the show. You're a ghost. You're, you're a ghost. <laughs> you were, yeah. Why and uh, <laughs> and it was and it was me as a ghost, and then my dead body as a dead body. And uh, I remember that the guy who played my dead body was very good looking, and I was <laughs> I was he was he was he did a great job. I don't know. And I think and then then I did another show, and they were trying to find a body double for me, and I was like. That guy and I, I, I was like, this guy's great, and I like got them to use the same guy. Yeah, he was he was like the TV version of you. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a poor man's me. Yeah, um, Jesse. I'm a poor man's Megan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also want to. By the say- way, this is how I get ninety percent of my roles. By the way, I just if Megan has a brother on the show, <laughs> or I have to try to walk into a guy for an episode. That's how Aaron, I. We did a. We. I'm sorry, Tam. You're going to say something. Go I was just going to say congratulations on uh, on uh, your sh- on finishing your show. Right? It's done. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's well, a thank huge you. That's accomplishment. You should feel really good about that, man. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's the the real reason why I'm here is that there's yeah. a new episode tomorrow night. Of <laughs> <laughs> final season, and it premieres on the CW. <laughs> uh yeah but yes congratulations on supergirl it's been a great run awesome that was awesome and yeah. by, I, by the way i just wanted to comment that there was i don't know if you aaron sagers you've certainly seen a few of our panels and stuff and we always try to be like what could we do that's weird in our panel and we did half a we did an almost half a panel with jesse <laughs> as megan's imposter we're like, oh, it's, oh it's Sam Hutchinson, it's Kristen Hager, and it's Sam Whitworth, and Megan Rath, and then Jesse just came on, <laughs> and, and we just I had we a did half the panel like that with everyone going, "Are they gonna ever? I mean, are they gonna you dress this?" You had a this? wig. You had a wig, and you tied your T-shirt up like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. T-shirt knot. So you, you know, know, like and how then, I wore my T-shirt, like how Megan does it. As <laughs> right. You and then halfway through the panel, there was a curtain behind us. And we hear this, mm, mm, and we pull the curtain back, and Megan's tied up on the chair with the <laughs> gag. I, I believe that was Dragon Con, right? I seem yeah. to recall. Yeah. 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 Those were some of my favorite panels that we ever yeah. did. Those were I, so fun. Well, I guess that with that question, what are the moments on set or off that when that come to mind when you reflect back on this show or when you kind of yeah when you reflect fondly back on this show what are the moments that really come to the forefront of your mind was it a comic con was it i don't know i remember jello shots in orlando universal studios oh halloween god. horror night oh my god sammy remember that that was the worst <laughs> day of my life yeah i remember that that was the worst day of your life uh um, that I, was nice toured the world in season one and i didn't get to go do any of those things yeah that, I, was, that, well, you was, missed, that was before you missed out on episode. I missed out on panel. That was that was the first one we ever did for the show. It was mm-hmm. like for the press. I think it was like I don't know what it was, but was Sammy and I got there a day early, and we decided we're like let's have a drink. We decided to have a day of Long Island iced teas. I'll never I've never had one ever since, and we got obliterated. Uh, there was one point you were lying on the hotel floor, and I was for some reason trying to stomp on you. I think we were. I, I don't I honestly like they were also not just Long Island iced teas. They were like Universal <laughs> Studios gag like, like Long Island iced teas. And we I, I like I mean I when I drank could put it back. <laughs> and oh you God. matched me. Yeah, it was the worst day of my life. I don't think I've ever been more hungover the next day. Like when we were, we did the panel, I was so hungover that I couldn't even, I was shaking on the stage. Oh, and all I was looking for was like the exit if I had to run to go throw up. It was, it was hell. I felt really bad for you. And yet that night yeah, you, you followed it up. You live and learn, right? We'll never I, that You know, again. speaking of living and learning and, and, and alcohol use, I had yeah. my, I, <laughs> yeah had my first hangover on the show <laughs> uh, and I shot a fight scene with my first hangover ever because Aiden was supposed to get drunk, like obliterated drunk. And I'd never, I don't drink. So I'm like, Oh, I better get obliterated drunk and film myself trying to do the dialogue and me obliterated drunk in a dialogue is it's like, if you see what's in the episode, that's the toned down version of what I was like obliterated drunk. And I almost killed myself that night because I didn't know I wasn't supposed to drink the whole oh, bottle of vodka. They were like, no, you don't do the whole thing. I'm like, oh, I thought I had to get obliterated drunk. And so uh, it was not. I don't ever want to do that again. Bad choices. Uh, yeah. Alcohol aside, um, <laughs> the other moments that, that come to the forefront of your mind when, when you reflect back on this show, and if you were to sum up the experience in a memory or two, what would what would it be? Sam um, getting complaints for farting on set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um that was a big deal for me too 
<laughs> well, here was, and the thing was is that we tried to explain to, you know, the, the staff that was there normally was fine with it, but the, the, the guest directors that had to be explained to them that it's like, no, this is part of our process. Sam <laughs> farting uh, keeps us all buoyant and, you know, keeps the show running. Yeah. Mm. Um, Same, hence the name Dingleberry that you're you're rocking today. Yeah, I, yes. I know. I did, I'm gonna, not going to lie. I thought that was just going to be for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be a whole thing. No, anytime anyone screen grabs it, there I am. <laughs> there it is. Now. The, the actor formerly known as Sam Huntington. Yeah. Now Dingleberry. Uh, <laughs> I feel like for me... Uh, um, there were moments in the kitchen when there were, it was the four of us in the kitchen that I still don't know that I've ever laughed so hard in my life. And we had them all, like it happened all the time where we'd be in the kitchen and Whitworth would do something ridiculous and it would just become the runner for the day. And then we would just be in hysterics, much to the like frustration of the crew who were just trying to do their job. I know. I can't believe we behaved like that. Oh my gosh. I do look back at it and I'm like, oh my gosh. But it's probably why like it kind of works too, you know? Mm -hmm. Like one of the reasons. I, I know, but like some of the stuff, like I mean, we were like you would not get away with that shit today. Like this you know what I what you did uh, yeah. to that director. Yeah. I, I, you know, I yeah, I thought about that. And I've reflected <laughs> on that. I think I've grown a lot because of that. I think. <laughs> Do you, should we should we say what it was? Then? Yeah. If you could, if, if yes, it's, yes. It's a shame that you don't have another human there that you can, you know. Yeah, you need a you need out a, on. a person. Right. Now, for the record, I never touched the man. I just pretended <laughs> to be touching. I. You go, okay, there's a movie called there's a movie called Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, and and in it, um, you know, uh, not Michael, uh, Kirk Douglas Kirk plays Douglas. Ned Land, and this big sort of barrel chested guy, and he's like, "Hey, I'm Ned Land, mate." And he tells everyone, "Mate," and his his chest is like this, and he just kind of goes <laughs> around everywhere, and he has a he has a musical number. Kirk Douglas has a musical number, and he and it goes like, "I'll a whale of a tail, tell you lad, a whale of a tail or two. I'm the flopping fish and the girls I love on the mind that bathe on the moon above. Whale of a tail, and it's all to us. Where by my tattoo." And Kirk Douglas <laughs> chews the scenery so hard that that became a thing that I did on set. That I'd come in and be like, "Look, guys, it's Kirk Douglas," and then I'd be like, "Ah, whale of a tail, tell you lad, set one and someone on fire. Whale of a tail or two, punch a guy. I'm the flopping fish and shoot a guy, and you know, just like just completely." Just, just he, he came on and and he chewed the scenery and and yes and and as I was going through and you know going around and putting my arm around a crew member and doing this and singing it and then I came behind the director and I was like well let me tell you this and I did that and then I went on to someone else so for me it was just one part of it it he, was so it was so well, seamlessly done which was why yeah. it was so it you was just you was, wreaked havoc yeah. yeah. When Kirk Douglas, when I become Kirk Douglas, that's I'm not in control anymore. I just I go. It's all it's all Kirk. Uh, 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 oh, uh, oh, man. Kristen, uh, the thing that what, what's sort of the 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 memory, the thing that leaps out for you? Oh, when it's not. Like it was this special moment in time where every time, any time I think about it, no matter when or where, it's just I'm filled with such happiness. It was so special. It was the most fun job I've ever had uh, with literally my best friends. I've never gotten so close to another group of co-stars ever before. And I don't think I ever will again. Like it was this really special thing and it was all caught on camera, like all in, caught on film, all these moments between us, which is magic. Like it was perfect. Every, yeah, I, I it just, it warms my heart to think about. Mm -hmm. And uh, Megan. Um, yeah, I think what Sammy was saying too, those times in the kitchen, it was something that happened when we were at the end of a block or <clears throat> trying to finish the season. We'd go like into crazy overtime and just become delirious. But it was it was so much fun and we were just running on adrenaline. Um, but those were the moments that were, were truly just so much fun that I've never you know, experienced again, nor do I really want to or have the energy for. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, it really is a special moment in time that 
you know, will I'll always I'll always cherish and will always be really really close to my heart. Some of the most um, memorable in a in a positive way too were some of the more challenging uh, moments. You know, um, anytime we got to like do a really really heavy scene together or. Um, Anytime that like Chrissy and I would like wake up naked in the woods and like have to like fight through a day of just being like so uncomfortable and then getting through that day and being like, holy shit, like we, we did that. Like that was, that was really impressive. And the other thing is like that I'll never, ever, ever like, I'm so grateful to like have had this in my professional life is like, like the, the three of them were like my biggest cheerleader and like, and we were all each other's like anytime any of us like just fucking nailed something, um, you know, we would just be like, boy, that, you know, like it was just so um, supportive and incredible. And, and, uh, and I, I just always felt like I was doing it, you know, not just for me, but like to like impress and, and like live up to, um these guys we've said we've all said it before it's like we we just um all had so much respect for each other and and uh and and that that is just something that is holistically a wonderful memory for me is like just being um supported like that i i've never worked with three other actors where i couldn't peg what their limitations were and what i mean by that is you you know you work with people for a while you get to know what they're good at what they're not good at this and that i was constantly impressed because they would always the writers kept throwing curveballs and wonderful things for people to to do and i was always so impressed with what these three actors would turn in because it would that you would you'd honestly go well what can't they do at this point i you know i i remember just being so it feeling so lucky that I got to see them every day and and work with them and and learn from them. It was really really fun. Mm -hmm. And and Jesse, I want to hear from you as well. I mean, having come into this and what what was your memory of this show? Well, I just want to say like you know this this thing you guys talked about talk about like this connection between all of you guys. It's not just something that that uh, that only you guys can see. Like everyone else on the outside sees it too. And, and for me, it was like, I always saw this magical thing happening to my sister and, uh, and seeing the, the friendship and connection and synergy that you guys had as a cast became something that I would always uh, aspire to have with my cast on a show. And uh, it, it kind of set the bar as to what, you know, something, what you could achieve uh, with, uh, with, you know, a chemistry. And so, um, so I, I, you know, it wasn't just special for you guys. It was special for all of us to see you guys uh, work with each other. That's <laughs> I know, man. Me too, Maggie. Holy shit! It's great, <laughs> Jesse. On, man. Wow, that that was good. That's a great note to to wrap up on. And I, uh, I, and and I know we're we're out of time. But before we go, just uh, a silly question: uh, If there were ever to be a uh, a reboot of this show or a uh you know if they were to resurrect this show what would your characters be doing wrong answers only be as ridiculous as you care to be uh jesse i'll start with you and uh we'll go from there i'd be a le leprechaun st stuck in a bungalow trying to find my window <laughs> i love it <laughs> um, all right, uh, Megan. Why don't you take it from there? Oh, uh, I think that Sally would have found a way to come back to life. She'd live in Florida and be uh, addicted to bath salts. With full COVID. <laughs> <laughs> we also know that that if anyone had COVID out of this group, it's Josh. <laughs> no. I work in a hospital, and I probably don't wash my hands. <laughs> Uh, uh, Kristen, how about you? I uh, changed her name uh, to Patricia <laughs> Lancaster. Um, is a secret agent, wears wigs, lives in Europe somewhere. <laughs> I, I feel like she would have the best chance for like a somewhat normal or bad, uh, badass normal life, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Patricia Lancaster. 
Yeah, Jessica uh, Lancaster. Yeah. Uh, okay. Or Patricia. Sorry. Um, Patty. Sam. Uh, Aiden moved to Vegas. He lives with a Cyclops unicorn and a horseman, <laughs> centaur man named Horseman. And uh, and he dances. He dances <laughs> and he, he only drinks from uh, bagged uh, crocodile, uh, which is made of Anyway, and it's looking bad on his skin, but it's great. It's he's having the time of his life. <laughs> All right, uh, Sammy, do you want to wrap up? Yeah, Josh, I think he probably moved to Thailand, <laughs> and he married um, uh, a, like an eighty-six-year-old woman <laughs> um, because you know he's got ho- like really, really horrific mother issues, and. Um, and so he's just kind of waiting for that to, to, to fizzle out um, so he can start the next chapter of his life. He's already lined up another old woman. Yeah. To um, he's having an affair with her now. Um, <laughs> I like that in no scenario was uh, Nora and Josh still together. No. The- <laughs> no. No mention of your kids. No. No, 100%. They're cruising right for divorce. You, you know oh, yeah. I mean? When I see that... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, guys, uh, with that said, first off, just thank you so much for doing this. I know the fans out here are going crazy. We're, we're looking at all these chats and people are so happy and I'm so happy to see you guys gather together. Uh, truly, this was a and is a special show, which you can see on Sundance now streaming on Sundance now. So you guys can still check it out. And yeah, Sammy, I have one last thing to say. And that is to acknowledge you, Sagers, because you have been with us since literally the beginning. And you've always been such a champion for us and such a wonderful human being to reconnect with. I love that we get to do this with you from time to time. I love that we keep in touch. You're a beautiful human being. And I'm just so grateful that we got to do this with you again, man. What a wonderful thing. I really am so, so grateful. I have to fight the feelings. <laughs> thank you. Totally true. You, you've you. been part of the team. I thank you all. And, um, and you know, I, I, I think this is great. So hopefully we'll see each other in the physical realm at some point very soon. And for all of you guys out there, let me just give a round of applause. Thank you, Jesse Rath. Thank you, Kristen Hager. Thank you, Sammy. Huntington, Megan Rath, and Sam Whitwer. Being human, happy anniversary, 10 years. This was incredible. Thank you guys for joining, and thank you for everyone Thanks. for tuning in. All right. I love right. you guys so Thanks, much. Thanks, guys. I love you guys. Whitwer rules. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Yeah. <laughs>